So as I said, intuitively, let me see if I uh, spell it correctly, uh, a continuous function is a function whose uh, graph can be drawn, I think that's the drawn, D-R-A-W-N, without lifting uh, the pen or the pencil of the paper if you do it. Uh, so that intuitively uh, the definition will be slightly different so here comes the definition of a continuous function of course we're going to talk about continuity over a certain interval or we're going to talk about uh, continuity at a point. We'll start with continuity at a certain point in question so we're going to say that um, a function f of x is continuous at a point, at x equal a, for instance, if uh, the following condition uh, is true, the limit as x approaches a of f of x is equals to the actual value of a of f at x equal a like so okay so so this is pretty much uh, the same thing as the paragraph above it means that at x equal a uh, the limit exists in other words we approach from the left we approach with the right we converge to the same value but on the right on the right side it tells you Wait a second, also we require that function can be evaluated at this point. And the value of the function indeed equal to the value of the limit. So uh, actually this one definition imply, uh, imply or implicitly uh, require that we fulfill three uh, conditions. So let's, uh, let's write this comment. Okay. This definition implicitly requires um, that uh, three conditions are met. So what are the conditions? Uh, condition one, look at the right side, we have f of a, so one condition is that f of a exists. In other words, you don't have a hole, you don't have an asymptote over there. The second condition is the left side. We have a limit on the left side, so we need the limit to exist. So the second condition, the limit of f of x when x approaches a exists. And the third condition, <coughs> sorry, uh, I lost my voice for a second, is really the definition. So we have the left side, the left side exists, the right side exists, and the left side equal the right side. In other words, the limit as x approaches a, the limit of f of x as x approaches a, actually equal f of a. Okay. Uh, let's follow this with, uh, with an example that goes like this. I'm going to sketch a graph, and I'm going to ask you at which <coughs> value, of, at which value of x the uh, following function is discontinued. It's a kind of uh, because it will be obviously continuous anywhere else. So here's the example. 
chakra at which value actually there is more than one so I'll put values of x is the uh, following function discontinues and here's the function see if I can sketch it so it will make sense so let me scale it Three, four, five. And here we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, So this is the uh, this is the function. First of all, we can see that this is indeed a function, as it passes the vertical line test uh, anywhere. So, <clears throat> which point are the our point of interest? Where where are we? Uh, which point we need to look carefully at to determine this continuity? All right, your turn to speak. Uh, basically, the horse, right? So let's see which which are the point in inter of interest. So the values in, in question, the x value in question, rather, are the following. Okay, you said one, I heard that, right? Where else? Six. Six, okay. And three in between. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So a one three and six. So we need to see if the three conditions right here on top, one, two, three, are met in each of at each of the point in question. Okay, so um, okay. So if one of the three condition is not met at the x equals one, x equals three or x equals six, then the function is discontinuous at this point. Of course, we can always resort to our intuition and say, okay, I need to lift my pen, therefore the function is discontinuous at this point, and we are done with. But let's say you're talking to a blind man. Ah, I'll stop there. So let's look at x equals 1. Are we meeting all three conditions? Condition 1, remember, f of uh, a. So f of 1, 
Let me go and show the graph so we can decide. Do we meet the first condition? Does f of 1 exist at x equals 1? Speak. No. So f of 1 does not exist. Okay. So we have this continuity at x equals 1. So we're going to say, all right, we're going to, I'll write this continuity since it's a long word, I'll write it as a DC. So we have DC at x equals 1. All right, so what about um, f of 3? Does f of 3 exist? Yes. f of 3 exists, it's actually negative 1, so we are okay here. What about the limit of uh, f when x approaches 3? Uh, does it exist? No. Does not exist because we approach from the left, we get negative 1. We approach from the right, we have 4. So, therefore, we have this continuity at x equals 3. Okay? And the last one is, actually, I should have written x equals 3 right there, so I'll put it... Right here, I think, f of 3. So, x equals 3. I forgot to insert that. And now, x equals 6. Does f of 6 exist? I need to bring up the paper. So, here, I have a solution. I'll show the graph like this so we can see side by side. Does f of 6 exist? And f of 6 equals what? The, the limit exists. Does it? No. Why not? We approach from the left, what do we have? One, two, three. We approach from the right, what do you have? The same value. The limit does exist, it's equal three. Okay, don't let it fool you. I mean, they don't have to equal each other. Well, this is like when we have a plug-in, uh, but uh, we have a hole at 3.3, 3, and we plug it in at 3.6. Now, by the definition, is this function continues? No. It's not because what we do next is going to say, wait a second, um, the limit of, when a, of f of x when x approaches 6 is not equal to f of 6. Therefore, we have this continuity at uh, x equals 6. So all three points are points of discontinuity.